Dominus, fortis sudo plebis Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you for joining us for Mass today. We're here at the Church of St. Paul the Apostle in New York City. Today, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred liturgy, we pause and call to mind our sins, and we call to mind God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ on. Christ on. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Kyrie. Forgive our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, grant that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you, I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. And shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant Answer me, O Lord, from bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. Seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus, death came to all men inasmuch as all sinned. 
for up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Though sin is not accounted when there is no law, but death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin. After the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by transgression of the one of the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man Jesus Christ overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaimed on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Back when I was a campus minister in California, the retreat team, the students who were planning for the October retreat, committed to praying every day for the retreatants and then writing about it. One of these letters I saved, it's about the meaning of life. Janelle writes that I was up until 6 a.m. studying. Some of my neighbors were walking by about five and they were surprised to see a light. So they came in. I asked each of them what they were doing, and one of them said she was writing a paper on the meaning of life. Hmm. So of course, we all just started discussing the meaning of life. I had honestly never thought about defining such a cliche term, but what I came up with right away was love. My neighbors, both of whom were atheists, argued with me that it's self-love. I couldn't contain my dropping jaw. 
because every pure experience of my life, every moment that truly mattered, every time I felt truly blessed, were spent sharing my love of God and of others, and usually both together. I cannot imagine walking the world thinking that I'm alone, there's nothing greater. I think the most important aspect of church, of our coming retreat, is guiding others on their personal experience of God, but also together building a community of support where we can foster those experiences. So when you come right down to it, what you're left with in simplified form about the meaning of life is love. And in our task planning the retreat, it's love for our retreatants. So, the meaning of life, how would you put it? If it is to be more than a cliche, it demands a rethinking, a fresh articulation in every phase of life. How do we put this into words now, a time of pandemic and uncertainty? The meaning of life. Take a look at it for yourself. Take a look at it for who we are as a society. Take a look at it from a Christian perspective. What is the meaning of life for a person of faith? All summer long, we will be hearing from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. And Romans is Paul's answer to this question, I think. I understand it as St. Paul's treatise on the meaning of life. He says in other letters things like, life is Christ. It is no longer that I live, Christ lives in me. Now, as he writes this letter to the Romans, Paul is on his way to Rome. He's to present his case, his appeal to the emperor. In writing the letter, Paul, in a sense, is presenting his uh, credentials to the Christians who are already there in Rome. The other letters he writes to the Thessalonians and Corinthians and Galatians, they're addressed to a particular community on a particular issue. But Romans is like a systematic theology. Paul can be esoteric in this letter. I can lose him in loops of rabbinical and philosophical language. But in fact, all of this comes out of Paul's experience. And remember, in the first Christian century, it was hard to be a Christian. Paul himself writes of beatings and shipwrecks and imprisonment. Paul and Barnabas, one time when they're beat up and thrown out of town for preaching Christ, rejoice that they are found worthy to suffer for Christ. In the letter to the Romans, Paul writes of his excitement about the new faith, of, his out, of the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit on his community, powerful preaching, healing, lively praise, prophecy, discernment, new life. So, as I said, all summer we'll be hearing from the letter to the Romans. Now, I know that preachers often ignore the second reading, uh, except lectors, of course, have to immerse themselves in the word to proclaim it well, and thank you, lectors. But preachers, more often are drawn to the gospel parallels. Their stories, their images, in that way they're easier to read 
and they're easier to reflect on. We'll be hearing in coming weeks about seeds to sow. We'll hear that the kingdom is like a buried treasure, or like a mustard seed, or like a measure of yeast. All this appeals to the imagination. So I don't know if any of our preachers will be inspired to delve into Romans this summer. So I recommend it to you. You could read it in an hour, but it needs to be chewed on and digested well and reflected on and then brought to our own Christian experience. What will we find? Well, first of all, we find some straight talk about the human condition. We're all under the domination of sin. In another letter, Paul bemoans, the good that I would do, somehow I don't. And the bad things I don't want to do, sometimes I do them. He knows how much he needs Christ. A second point, very strong. God saves through Jesus Christ. It's not all about me. It's not about my efforts. It's about God's love and God's power. In chapter 3 of Romans, he writes, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Paul talks about God's righteousness. This is the way that God is. God's way of righting wrongs. God's love forever. As we read these things in Romans, apply it. Let the word speak to your life, critique your values. We have a good opportunity to take a look at life this summer. Black Lives Matter challenges us to take a deeper look at justice in our society. So, if we believe that we're created equal, do our attitudes and laws and the way we spend money as a country, all that reflect the truth? If we see a pattern of sin embedded in society, do we repent? That's an important question the U.S. bishops asked in their recent letter against racism. Open wide your hearts. There's also challenge and opportunity because of the pandemic. It's easy enough to think, well, I'm okay. But think also about the common good. Who gets left behind in these days? Our response to both crises will reveal who we are and what we really believe. The third thing in Romans, faith. Paul cites the example of Abraham, who believed his experience of God and then set out not knowing where he was going. What's your response to your experience of God? Paul, in his critique of how the law of Moses was observed, his critique of its shortcomings, strongly asserts that, well, the lesson of this is that we cannot save ourselves. He asserts that it is faith in Christ. A fourth important theme is justification. Now, this was a big issue in the Protestant Reformation 500 years ago. Faith and works, scripture and tradition. Well, about 20 years ago, we finally worked this out with the Lutherans and came up with a beautiful document agreeing that we're looking at the same mystery, but just starting at different ends. Justification. 
By this thought, Paul insists that salvation is by God's initiative. Chapter six in Romans was very important to St. Augustine, also to Martin Luther, John Wesley, and so many seekers who struggle to find and understand and surrender to faith. The teachings of Paul in this chapter led them to deeper conversion, surrender, commitment to live the gospel. Maybe it will speak to you in that way. A fifth theme, the power of God's Spirit. We'll spend five Sundays in the summer just hearing from chapter eight in Romans, what it means to live in the Spirit. St. Paul tells us then we, when we don't know how to pray, the Spirit intercedes, stirring us up with inexpressible groanings. The Spirit is the glue that holds us together. The Spirit is the encouragement we need, enthusiasm. A sixth theme is new Adam, the new humanity. We hear this today in the reading from chapter five It's part of a section where Paul is talking about the moral life of the justified. He says, the meaning of being human is not found in the Adam and Eve who sinned, but it's found in Christ who overcomes death and sin through his passion and rising. The way I like to explain this is, well, you know, often you'll hear people when they mess up, they'll say, I'm only human. I tell them, well, that's very understandable way to put it, but it's not good theology. Good theology reminds us that we fall short when we're not human enough, when we're not like Adam before the first sin, when we're not like the risen Christ. A final theme I pick out is moral teaching. Paul lists vices and virtues and graces. He gets into motives and our response to grace. He addresses errors like, well, I'm saved, so why can't I do whatever I want? Paul, in fact, says where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. But he corrects the guy who says, oh, well, if there's more grace, when there's, if there's more sin, I should commit more sins. Ah, St. Paul says, no, living in Christ, that's where it's at. Conversion is ongoing. Perseverance is a grace. Meanwhile, be a living sacrifice, holy, and pleasing to God. So we will hear these themes, sin and salvation, faith, justification, the power of the Holy Spirit, the new Adam, the meaning of life. That's how St. Paul puts it. How would you put it? Take a look at yourself. Take a look at the society around us. Me? Well, I'm very glad to be in good company with our retreat leader, Janelle, and with St. Paul, and with so many Christians over the centuries, alive, being saved in the Spirit.
Please join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. To our God, whose love shelters the needy and protects the powerless, let us pray through Jesus in whose mission and ministry we share. For the church throughout the world, may followers of Christ not be afraid to stand up to injustice, but rather proclaim the good news from the housetops. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord, prayer. Hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from the COVID-19 virus, for their caregivers, and for those who mourn the loss of loved ones who have died during this pandemic, may physical and emotional healing continue, and may medical researchers find a cure or vaccine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. On this Juneteenth weekend, we pray for those who hunger and thirst for justice, especially racial justice. May the recent efforts to spotlight our country's divisions help bring about lasting change, a renewal in race relations, and healing for all our citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fathers and father figures, may they experience God's grace to assist them in their responsibility to care for their children and to mentor well those who look to them for guidance and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, as we prepare to begin again, the celebration of the sacraments in this worship space. May we do so safely, keeping in mind the well-being of our fellow parishioners and our neighbors who remain susceptible to the COVID virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> May the Lord acknowledge before his Father in heaven our beloved departed especially Joseph Rogerio Sr., Sandra Guzman Feliz, John Anachila, and George Noble. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers we now hold in the silence of our hearts. May these prayers be joined to the prayers of our patron, St. Paul, and servant of God, Isaac Hecker. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear these needs we bring to you today, O God. Help us imitate your Son who trusted that you always heard his prayers. 
We pray this in the name of your Son, the one we confess as Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, receive the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you've set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you hold us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Mary, Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress as we wait the blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Take a 
away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. O Lord, renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy that what we celebrate with devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, before we go, two announcements. Uh, 
our um, gay, lesbian, tra uh, transgender, bisexual support group uh, out at St. Paul's uh, will be here for a pride mass. Well, we'll be virtually here online. Uh, this will be Thursday evening at 7 p.m. And check the website for further information. We'll be uh, live streaming it on the parish Facebook page. Also, since New York is moving into stage two of reopening, uh, we will be open for daily mass starting on Wednesday, which is the feast of the birth of John the Baptist. Uh, we're not sure yet exactly how that's going to look, if we're going to have both daily masses or just one. So um, take a look at stpaultheapostle.org or call the um, parish office on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday morning to find out. We have a special blessing today for fathers. And if you're at home with your father, grandfather, with the father of your children, you might join in the blessing by laying a hand on them and asking the blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. And grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Thank you all for joining us in prayer today. As public masses um, resume, we still will be uh, live streaming the mass. And remember um, that the obligation to attend in person is still uh, suspended. So that's left up to your best judgment. But in any case, make holy the Lord's day. That's for everybody every Sunday. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit remain with you forever. Let us go in peace to proclaim the gospel with our lives. Thanks be to God.